there we are. So we got some people moving on over. We got Tone, good to see you. Hey, Zabi and Steve Leahy and Brad. Now, did you guys have to go ahead and go to another channel, another page, or did it just come up? So let me know. So Laurel, more of the story, if there's any slight changes when the live stream, and Steve Leahy will, will uh, echo this, don't try to make any changes during the live stream. Invariably, you'll screw it up worse. So, uh, so, uh, so definitely, if it's just a little bit of a sound or something, never change it. Always just go with it because uh, that's really bad. So I'm glad it popped up, guys. Thank you so much. And let's go. So thank you so much for hanging out and, and sticking with it. Uh, Yes, that was a good rule, right, Steve? <laughs> so the Laura Dern contest, forgive me, guys. I still have to get a um, uh, get someone to judge it. Uh, so I'm looking for somebody uh, to judge the contest. Uh, I just been uh, kind of in DEFCON 4 as far as time, so I wasn't able to ask anybody. But... Uh, now, I know Steve Leahy, Mr. Leahy is very busy. Mr. Leahy, would you uh, want to be the, I hate to put you on the spot, but if you're busy, just say you're busy. Would you want to be the uh, judge of the uh, Laura Dern contest? It would be an honor. And uh, if that's something that you have time for. Uh, oh, look at that. Zavi said he would judge it. <laughs> That, that's interesting because you're in it, right? That's funny. So once again, we're going in here and we're going to kind of paint the light of the retroorbicularis opali fat right there. And everyone has it, uh, some more than others. And it's, it's just an anatomical fat compartment and uh, kind of gives us the shape of the face, not just the muscles and the bones. So right here I'm going to work on the zygoma, which is where the zygomatic bone first starts, at the side of the face. And then we're going to bring this down. Again, you want to be four inches away from the, sub, from the paper, uh, so that's important. But if you're busy, Steve, that's cool. Uh, so, but definitely, I'm looking for someone, a, a real special guest, very you know high level in the field, to to judge the contest. And uh, I was meaning to ask you, Steve, but it's just I've been like super crazy busy. Uh, you know, not just with artwork, just with other things life you know and so it's kind of gotten away there's only so many hours in the day for me to address it but you know i'll make it worth the while all everyone so there's only three artists that entered and there's going to be a first second and third prize so everyone's going to win everyone wins so once again four inches and i'm kind of bringing this down uh Oh, Steve says he loves to, but he's heading to Massachusetts in a couple of days. Oh, definitely. So, no worries. I'm going to keep looking. And uh, so, by definitely next week, we will have. Uh, so, that would be good. Uh, yes. Oh, so a couple of days for the holiday through New Year. That's great. The uh, Irish-Italian side. Yes, that's a, that's a really cool combination. And... So, Zavi uh, says he knows his zygomatic bone. He smashed my 40 years in the motorcycle wreck. Oh, my God. That's horrible, my friend. Thank God you survived. Yeah, the zygomatic bone is uh, really pretty important. If we look at it here, you can see how the zygomatic bone comes all the way around, uh, all the way around into the maxilla, which is where the side of the nose is, right here. So the zygomatic bone is also called the malar bone, and it's also called the cheekbone by a lot of people.
And how many entries? Three. So it's really cool. So uh, the chance of winning is 100%. And see, I'm, I'm doing this in a very transparent way. And because this way we can still see the paper. And we can always do another layer, right? And also, by doing going transparent, you are able to actually, uh, even further than that, by going transparent, you're, you're able to erase it rather easily if I ever went too heavy-handed. So maintain your four inches, and that's going to be very important, you know. And so the white mixture is my own. I make it from Drew Blair's 50-50 Illustration White, and I mix it with uh, one part distilled water, one part of the Drew Blair 50-50 Illustration White. It's the only white in the world that erases satisfactory. There is no other white that erases like that in the world. Well, at least that I know of. So it might be somewhere like in Tibet, there might be this white paint that just does everything for me. So if anyone knows about that Tibetan white paint, please let me know. And you can see down here, uh, we have the uh, different muscles and let me see if I could show another muscle here. Uh, these muscles right here, we'll get into that later. Right now I'm just gonna work on here. Cause it's really hard to see the muscles in the early going. So I'm kind of just gonna chill with the anatomy a little bit. But right here, you have the zygomatic bone and then from the zygomatic bone, you have the shadow of the zygomatic bone, which isn't that pronounced, right? However, the space between the zygomatic bone and the jawbone or the mandible, that's what causes this really deep shadow right over here. So just be careful not to lighten that area because that shadow is really deep between the zygomatic bone and the mandible. Or the cheekbone and the jawbone in layman's terms. And as you can see, just very lightly, we're just building things up. We're building up the underlying anatomy that's going to help us throughout the whole painting. Four inches hitting and move keeps you from, from uh, kind of uh, laying it on too thick. Right? You don't want to lay it on too thick. So you see see how we're kind of working on her face very nice and beautifully. And uh, so we're going to work on her face today. And I'm not going to go in and work on this other area. Because just like in photography, the light here and the light on her neck is different and her body. And you might say, well, Tim, it's the same light. Why is the light different here? And uh, yes, so we got to, so both of us, Steve, we're on a search for that Tibetan white. Uh, there's going to be a light fall off. In photography, there's a light fall off. So this is going to have a different, uh, a different value structure just down here than up there. And so that's why I'm just going to do this now. And then we're going to work down there. A little different approach, but I really want to touch on the approach of the science of light and the science of photography. Why the science of photography? Because let's face it, we're working from photographs. There's no way around it. You know, uh, in modern society, we can't, I can't get a girl to sit down and pose for me for two weeks for three hours a day. No, I, she wouldn't. So that's why we have to work from photos. Just going to the hit of this uh, frontal plane of the wing of her nostril here. Just ever so lightly. And then after we do this, we're going to come in and we're going to establish with the custom stencil, uh, the custom shield, we're going to establish the eyes, nose, and mouth. And we're just going to have a good time 
Well, I hope. I hope we're going to have a good time. I hope you guys have a good time. And so, really, the beginning of your portrait, like I said, in the football team, you set that tone, right? You set that tone with a really good defense. So you set that tone with a, with a smash mouth running game. And that's what we're doing here. We're setting the tone for paying attention to the anatomy and the really st strong structural forms now, right? So we set the tone for that. Think about it. That's exciting. Okay, so now I'm fairly happy with it. Let me just get this zygomatic bone and the zygoma going up there like that. Over here. Just really, just, and you know, you have to worry about the elegance or the ruggedness of your model. So you have to meet your model where they are. Don't try to make an elegant model strong. Don't try to make a strong uh, uh, model elegant. Just meet the model where they are. Okay, so I'm liking this so far. And let's see if I missed any great comments. Brad says it usually goes too thick with the white. And you're getting better though, Brad. You really are. So I see great improvements of your application of the white. And you can see just how I applied that white. Very simple. Uh, you know, I can always come back, but I think I have a nice tonal structure. And now I'm going to uh, give that a, an opportunity to dry. Let's remove this. So it looks like it's not anything, but watch when I remove this custom, this custom, uh, custom shield here. I always have these new terms, custom shield. All right, dun dun dun. There we go. Look just how light I've gone, right? It's like Tim, you've gone really light. I know, but uh, now it's time to come in with the next and it's going to be your friend and mine the eyes nose and mouth stencil custom stencil custom shield I, it takes me a while to get used to my new my new vernacular you know uh nameless says we begin anew how are you mr nameless great to see you all the way from california how's everything going with work i know you were having some difficulties i hope that's been resolved I don't like it when you stress out. So, you know, I know it's been a little bit rough. So, how's it going? Better, my friend? Sending good thoughts to you. Okay. I work so thin, so that white mixture is already. Already. That white mixture is already nice and dry. Okay, so here we go. Now, just because I have the eyes, nose, mouth stencil, I'm just going to spray like, psh, just go to town. No, because the eyebrow might be darker than the nostril. So I will, even though it's a custom, it's a custom shield, I am not going to just spray on it like I'm that Banksy guy. What a talented artist. Banksy is such a talented artist. He just goes ahead and sprays, uh, you know, he's right up there with AI. I hope he's watching, so, uh, but yeah. So, you have to have finesse, right? You have to, you just don't go, psh, like you have a spray can. You, you still have to vary because you can see that her eyes, right? Let's look here. You can see that her eyes are much darker than, let's say, uh, the shadow here or the eyelids right and it's much darker than the shadow underneath the nose So those are the things you have to take into consideration So we're not Banksy think think our lucky stars that we're not Banksy Okay, and so let's see All right, so remember we want to make sure that we are we are not letting underspray. Underspray is not your friend. It's not my friend. Uh, underspray, you know, wants to mess you up. You know, it's like, let's mess up his painting. That's what we want to do. So you got to make sure you fight underspray and say, not this time, underspray. Okay. 
and doing good, Nameless says, still still having trouble, gotten more time off, so that's good. Yes, it is. So sending good good prayers out to you. Uh, once again, I always want to thank God for the live streams, giving me my apartment, my studio, my lights, my computer equipment, my, you know, my wits about me, <laughs> and, and, you know, and my abilities to share this with you guys so thank you god for that and i always want i think i missed i didn't say that so i always have to make sure i say that okay so thank you for that now let's go ahead so we are going to spray with my detail mixture and remember the detail mixture is uh four drops of detail four drops of water we want to go very light light is right in the early going why do you want to go light in the early going? Because when you're going light in the early going, A, it's transparent. B, you're able to create texture. So as you are slowly going light, uh, darker, you're able to create texture. And that's a good thing, right? So as I can see, I'm just going to... And I spray away from the edge, right? I don't spray towards the edge. If I spray towards the edge, I'm going to get oh, under spray. I mean, yes. So you can see I'm covering everything. Um, I'm, uh, I'm fighting against overspray, but I'm also fighting against under spray. If there's a side spray, I'm going to fight against that. But I haven't found a side spray, spray yet. So that's cool. And so again, I'm just kind of establishing this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the iris. So let's, ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that, that's pretty cool. All right, so, so I don't know if the whistling's a good thing. I don't think so. Let's see, whistling is not a good thing when you're painting. I said you can whistle while you work, but this is taking it too far, isn't it? So let's see. So I'm just going to very lightly work on the iris and then the dark. Now the dark around the iris is usually the, the mass of the eyelashes. You know, yes, we always want to go ahead and paint the mass of the eyelashes, but we have to make sure we're going to get to the detail when we can. So what do you think of that whistling? I'm just going to establish the crease of the between the upper eyelid and the retroobicularis opa like that. And let's go on over to the other eye. Let's zoom in, shall we? Uh, Oh, so <laughs> Sabi says, looks like you might have a, be a Buddhist monk to get the Tibetan white. Yeah, that's, I wouldn't want to change my whole philosophy to do that. But hopefully, <laughs> we can make friends with one of the Tibetans so they can share that Tibetan. Uh, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create the Tibetan white, you know? The Tibetan white has been born tonight, if nothing but in my mind. The perfect white. There we go. And you see I'm being very, very cautious, very easy going. This is really just to establish the eyes, right? to give me a tonal structure. And once again, remember, we're setting, we're setting that tone, right? We're setting the tone. Just like, you know, playing Smash Mouth football in the first quarter. Like, whoa, what was that about? And that's what we're going to be doing throughout. Mr. Air Todd, always a pleasure. Yes, what do you think of the whistling, uh, nameless? All things start with a vision. That is so true, Zabi. So now we're going to do the dark of her nostril. But I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to build Rome in a day. 
So I'm just going to hit and move because if I stay there and I'm like, I'm going to get it dark, spidering, build up on the custom, on the custom shield, it just wouldn't be good. So we just have to be patient. Hit and move, hit and move, bob and weave. Now we're going to start with the uh, the darks around her lips. So uh, she has this these cute little front teeth here, and we're going to paint the dark very lightly, and the corner of her mouth. But these are actually these custom stencils are made from my drawing, right? Drawing that I did by hand. So it's not like, you know, I took them or anything. These are from my hand. Not better than if I did it from a photograph. It's not better, it's not worse. It's just my own way, right? We all have our own ways. There is no better or worse. So, you know, whatever really helps. I do like sometimes working, you know, cutting out a photograph. That's a good, a good method. So I do like that method as well. So my way is just my way and uh, you know I have a little seven-year-old student she's just amazing and you know what she says she goes like this she says art and so serious right cutest cutest kid ever and she goes art just goes where it wants to go so you just have to let it go there and so it kind of helps me to realize that there isn't a right or wrong way and I learned that from a seven-year-old and because they are just enjoying art and I want to get back to just enjoying art, enjoying other people's art, other people's approach and everything like that, other artists approach. And not be dogmatic, right? I don't want to be dogmatic. And somebody with my kind of education in art, you know, it's easy to get dogmatic because my teachers were like, this is the way it is. You know, so I have to chill out. So 2023 is going to be a new improved chilled out Tim. So that's going to be good, I hope. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hit that dark of the nostril again. So you see, we can go back, right, and hit that dark. And you know the dark of the nostril is darker than the other area, so that helps. Yes, so true, Steve, and from the mouth of babes is the truth, you know. And Dwayne says he spent many hours listening to stencils making head sounds. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dwayne. Uh, I, you know, hopefully we won't have too many of these stencils in the future. A good stereo, yeah, that does help, you know. I like blasting classical music like Franz Liszt or something like that. Or maybe even, you know, some Nine Inch Nails. So a very eclectic uh, music coming from my studio, as I'm sure, with you guys and girls. So a quick question. I'd like to hear from everybody. What is the music that you have going on in your studio the last time you painted? That's really good. So the last time you painted with music, what was the music? I like that. Kind of listening to you guys now and girls. Let's see, Unleash the Archers, very cool. Is that a band, my friend? And uh, Zabi says he likes to paint like David Naylor, no stencil. Very cool, yeah. That's a great way, definitely. And, you know, there's no right way or wrong way. Uh, also, Drew Blair, Timothy John Smith, uh, teaching me to paint. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Thanks, Zabi. That's exciting. So, uh, always remember, if anyone has taken my course, I'm here for you. 
to answer any questions you have, okay? And Tone says, House of Music and Tupac Playlist, nice. Very cool. Yes, so well, that's great. I love hearing that. I gotta check that out and, you know, from what you guys are listening to and maybe try that when I'm painting. So I like uh, Liebestrom by Franz Liszt, and so I love listening to that or some Mozart. Also, I, I may listen to uh, uh, some Pearl Jam. I love 90s alternative music. That gets me going, gets the blood flowing. Okay, so now we can uh, go ahead and... What I like doing is doing like this little hinge method, and I'll show you what I mean. So uh, when I lift this, I can see if I need to do more, right? So, and with the hinge, if I, if I don't like it and I need to do more, I can just put it back on there. You gotta be careful with these magnets. Sometimes they get ink on them or paint, so you have to clean them. And this is a real case in point. See how it's leaving ink that I don't want. So it's pretty scary. So let's lift my friends. Okay, nice, nice structure. I'm happy with it. No need to do more. Okay, so now we can lift this up. And let's see. Uh, Steve says, Doc Severinsen in a Tonight Show band. <laughs> That's so cool. Dun, 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 dun. I love that. And I remember as a kid, uh, listening to, you know, I had to go to bed, but my parents always, my mom and dad always had the Tonight Show on. And uh, always said, one day I'm going to be able to watch that show. You know, and so funny how that just that that opening monologue that he does that music just really just has like a reaction like Pavlov's dog you know see that so you got to be careful of the uh, of these uh, ink these, these magnets leaving something so look at that so I like that right so what I want to do is I'm going to stay working on the face just as a lesson today, right? So I'm going to go back to my original stencil where just the face is exposed. And that's going to help us because then we're going to talk about anatomy, talk about using the detail mixture, why, and all that stuff, rather than my usual approach, which is how I work on the painting. But this way I can actually talk about a lesson. And uh, this way I can give the most in this live stream and that's what it's about how can I give the most right that's what I want to do and every time I have the chance you know with an apartment and and uh, a studio and and the ability to do this it's such a gift and I want to treat it as such because it really is it's a gift. It's a gift for me. I could share, and the knowledge that I learned from from video and audio and computers and everything. It all it all comes together. So let's see what I missed. Uh, oh, Billie Holiday. Ah, oh, she's fantastic. Billie Holiday is amazing. Uh, I do like Rachmaninoff. I like listening to him. That's always very exciting. Uh, jazz is incredible, you know. Coltrane, you can't go wrong, right? John Coltrane, definitely. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start modeling, right? What I mean by modeling is a portrait is basically the large form, right? Which is the, the head, the skull. But really it's a series of, of three-dimensional objects that are attached together and are being affected by the same light source most of the time. So when we think of that, then all of a sudden it becomes a lot less of a mystery and then each of these specific forms 
our job is to look at it and kind of be like a light detective and figure out just by the light what's the shape of it right uh is it coming forward is it is it moving uh is it moving away from us but at an oblique angle or is it flat from us all those different things are what you can do when you are paying attention to the light and realizing that everything is being affected by that one light source so the first thing you want to do is you want to you're at the scene of the crime the crime was the time that you know one one two hundred and fifty of a second when the photographer took a picture of her with the light source and maybe a reflector and that's the scene of the crime you're Columbo and what you're doing is you're trying to reproduce exactly what happened to understand by the clues left behind in this photograph on how to reproduce the moment that this three-dimensional person was in this three-dimensional space with air and oxygen and water molecules and all of that so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to kind of figure out where is the light coming from are there two light sources all those different things the first thing a photographer will do a port photographer is it's important for them to have a catch light a catch light is this highlight in the eye right there you see that and then you'll see these other two lights right underneath it see those two lights you see that big catch light in the middle of her pupil and then these two lights that big light is your main light source that's going to be what is affecting everything and then you might ask yourself what are those two little lights Tim what are they doing there they're reflectors either they're an active reflector or a passive reflector a passive reflector in photography is like a white piece of board or a piece of like uh, aluminum uh, like an aluminum foil or something like that that's going to reflect the light from the main light source which is that big light and then the uh, the two subsequent lights are going to be filling up the shadows and you're like filling up the shadows why would you want to fill up the shadows the thing is when you're painting people especially women uh, when you are oh my tea is done so when you are actually painting a woman there's going to be harsh shadows and when it is harsh shadows it's going to amplify the imperfection it's going to amplify the asymmetry of her so with these two little reflectors right underneath there that's what they're there for but the thing is the good thing about the reflectors they're usually half power of the main light so you don't really see them what you're really seeing is that the shadows are weaker and creating a much more beautiful image uh, so that's what you do also if someone's older you don't want to accentuate their wrinkles or the the texture of their face so you want to have as many of these reflectors as possible so now you know we did our little Columbo thing right so now we can see that the light is coming from above slightly to the left camera left and is in between you and me let's just say it's in between you and me and how we really can tell exactly where that light is is usually the cast shadow underneath the nose see that cast shadow underneath the nose how it's straight down but a little bit over to the right which is opposite of where the light's coming from which is above and a little bit over to the left so that thought process is going to be something that is going to be the theme throughout your whole painting. It's going to be the clues as to what happened at that one two hundred fifty of a second. So I really hope that uh, really helps. You know what I mean? And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll go forward. But before I do that, let me see any questions. Mr. Ann Todd says, Tim, what's the difference between a Badger Extreme Patriot Arrow and the pack valve and one that doesn't have it? A lot. Because if you get the, uh, if you just get the Patriot 105, it does, it's not, doesn't have the tweaks that mine do, it does. That means I have like 15 points of reference that I check to make sure it's perfect. 
so I change the, I make sure that the trigger's working. I make sure that even the adapter doesn't have a piece of cork in it that may give you trouble down the line. I also uh, make sure that I loosen up the needle guard so it's not too much friction going on. And also make sure that the needle packing is really important. But besides my only changes and then with the needle, and also testing it out for four hours. But the thing is, the pack valve is what's going to enable you to change the air at the point of where it's really needed, right close to your nozzle, your head assembly. So, and I can tell you because I work on this airbrush probably about 30 to 40 hours a week. So it really is, uh, does everything that you need to. If you get, let's say, the Badger Patriot 105 straight from the factory, it's more, it's not really anything like this. It's a great airbrush, don't get me wrong, it's a wonderful airbrush, but it's not a detail airbrush. This is your high-end detail airbrush because of what I do to it and because of all the, the hundreds and hundreds of hours I've worked on these things. So I really hope that helps. So. Uh, Mr. Steve Leahy likes to stick around, but tomorrow's the last day before travel. Oh, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, happy holidays, safe traveling. And, uh, and so that's very important. And uh, Zavi says he's going to enjoy his when he wins the contest. I wish you well, my friend. Uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, so, so I hope that helps. It's, it's not just, you know... The Badger uh, 105 without the, without the pack valve is a great airbrush, but it doesn't do the detail that this does. Uh, and, you know, like I said, I work with Badger because Badgers, to me, are amazing airbrushes. They just really are. So right now, I always want to work on the eyes, right? Why does I want to work on the eyes? That's the star of the show, right? In a portrait, that's the star of the show. So what I want to do is I want to first work on the large form of, of the eyes. And the largest form is this retro avicularis eye fat right here. And so it's going to be affected by the light. Remember, the light's coming from above and slightly to the left, camera left. So that means below and to the right, we're going to see more shadow. And with this, with this uh, detail mixture, which is very transparent and very light, I'm able to really try and recreate what happened during that one moment in time that this photograph was taken. So right now you can see there's this shadow of this and I'm about three inches away this shadow of this retro avicularis opalite fat and it kind of comes over like that now it also continues over to the over to the side so here the retro avicularis opalite fat compartment kind of ends right here and then comes basically is just our eye socket there's really nothing here hardly anything there uh just skin and uh goes right into the eye socket so it's a very vulnerable spot on us humans so i'm being very close attention to what's happening here and rome isn't built in a day so i'm not trying to solve solve the equation just yet. I'm just getting the large shapes right now. And, but definitely I want to feel this fat compartment right here. I want to feel it. I want to feel as it's turning towards the light and away from the light, right? That's what I want to do. Oh, wow. Thank you, Dwayne. That means a lot to me. Dwayne says he really, uh, he really enjoys his Extreme Patriot Arrow. I appreciate that. And Mr. Todd says he likes Tim's brush. It doesn't like me, neither does my other brushes. Todd, you can always contact me and we'll, we'll work on that together, okay? Uh, so you ever have any questions, I'm always happy to help. 
I might not get back to you right away, but I will get back to you, I promise. Those who take my courses, take my mentorship program, buy my airbrushes, I'm always available. I'm available even if you don't buy those things. I'm always willing to help. So as you can see, uh, we just are kind of working that out. And you see how just very lightly we're, we're getting that? So let's move on over to eye number two, which is being affected by that same main light source. So let's zoom in. And this is the eye on camera, right? And again, so on, so right now the first thing we're gonna work on is the side of the eye socket right here, right? Just the side of the eye socket, just like that. And always check for any kind of tip dry. You get a lot less with the, uh, with the airbrush in the inks than you do with acrylic, definitely. So that's refreshing. You'll enjoy that, you know, those who are used to using my airbrush India inks. And of course the, the upper eyelid is in shadow here. But as we go towards the corner of the eye, it's catching more light, so it gets lighter. And of course we're gonna work out this shadow and crease of the upper eyelid here. I'm going to move this over just a bit. Okay, and right here we're going to uh, work on this retro obicularis opalite fat. We're going to concentrate on the light on that retro obicularis opalite fat. So some say, you know, Tim, why are you, uh, you know, memorizing all this stuff? There's really only 50, 60 uh, parts of the human head from the skull to the muscles to the, uh, the skull, the muscles to the fat compartment. So it really isn't that much. And once you learn it, it's yours. And that's always going to help you create better paintings, better portraits. So right here, you're going to see we're going to have something called the temporal ridge. And uh, let me darken this so we can see this. Okay, so right here is this temporal ridge. And I'm going to show you right over here. We're going to look at this picture here. And you'll see it, right? You see this? This is that ridge I'm talking about right over there on both sides. And so we, you can see it really clearly. And now we're just going to go ahead and paint it. Okay, so let's make this happen. And there it is, right there, plain to see, very predictable. But the thing is, when you're waiting to see it, you're going to find it really fast. And you're going to get excited when you find these anatomical bones and muscles and fat compartments. You're going to be like, wow, I knew it was going to be there. There it is. And uh, it just takes away the uh, complexity or kind of the complexity is still there, but you have the key to it, which I like. And that's really cool. So we have some erasing to do in there, but that's, that's later, right? You put that in the back of your head and you go back to it. Now, why would you do that? Because if it's still wet, if you erase it, you're going to do much more harm than you ever could. And so, as you see, we're going to be working down the eye. But let's go ahead and let's, let's work uh, down here. So first we're going to erase. Even though we have an aggressive eraser, we're not going to be so aggressive. And we're just going to erase some of that 50-50 illustration white that we sprayed earlier. And because it's a very subtle shadow here, so we might be able to get away with just using the uh, shadow, the, the tint of the paper, you know, this, this uh, color line, pebble gray paper. And so maybe not, so we can come here and maybe give it a little more, a little more shadow, especially when it's turned 
further away from the light. Okay, so now even though we're we haven't done much detail, we're getting structure. So you're gonna say, well, Tim, there's a temporal ridge on this side. Where is it on that side? Well, when you look for it, you'll find it, and it's ever so slight, but it's there. And we're just gonna put that in ever so slightly, and uh, it's subtle, but it's there, and uh, and it's easy to achieve. All right, so. Let's go down the center line and work our way out. So now we're going to work on the nose, but we're not going to just blindly work on the nose, you know. We're going to go in there a little bit. Uh, oh, that's a great idea. Dwayne says to strain everything that you put into your airbrush. Yes, especially when you're working in acrylic and stuff like that. I can definitely see that being a very important uh, step. Definitely, because anything gets clogged in that airbrush, it's just no good. Uh, so let's look at the nose, okay? Uh, we're going to look at her nose, and I have an anatomical diagram for us to see. So the nose is basically three parts, uh, three on one side, three on the other. And you have the nasal bone, that's the only bone in the nose. And that's at the very top. And you can see that looking at, at her. Um, so that's the very top. And then uh, below that, in the middle, you have the upper lateral cartilage, right? Which is right here. And you can see that. And then you have what's called the alar cartilage. And the alar cartilage is means wing. So it's like a, like looks like two butterfly wings coming out and so those are things and there are different shapes and everything like that but you definitely once you are looking for these different parts of the nose uh, it doesn't it it just it's not so scary right and you're not using just your powers of observation you're not just using 100% of your powers of observation on this you are you're painting what you see, but you're also painting what you know. So right now, if I look at this here, and I have my pencil here, but I'm going to use this pencil. I'm just going to loosen this. Here we go. Use my mechanical pencil. And we want to see that alar cartilage on her. And right here we can see that little ridge of the alar cartilage right there. And then right here as well. This, this side is really close. So like I said, she's a beautiful woman, but she's not symmetrical. So it's the photographer's job to use those reflectors to kind of uh, soften those shadows to accentuate her beauty and not the, the asymmetrical qualities of her face. So let's make this big so you can see what I'm doing, right? You can see that I am working on the ridge of the alar cartilage, which I'll come here, lower this, bring in the alar cartilage, And so now you can definitely understand that on the bottom there, that's this little ridge there. That's what you're seeing, this little step down. And everyone's different. So you're going to see variations of that alar cartilage, but you are definitely going to have a much better understanding of it. So even though I do indicate it, I want to make sure the pencil lines are light. Even though my Airbrush India inks are wonderful, when you erase them, uh, when you, erase, you can erase the pencil lines underneath the Airbrush India inks and underneath this Tibetan white. <laughs> right, guys? The Tibetan white, we're actually, we're claiming the Tibetan white right now in our future. So now, 
we're looking at the nodes, right? We're looking at those, the, the different cartilages, the three segments, and we're just gonna try and understand this a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna spray off to the side, and I want to, uh, I want to paint the alar cartilage first. Not the alar, but the navel bone. And I'm gonna make this big and put this here. Let's move her down. Let's move this guy out of the way so we can see as we are first painting this nasal bone right here. Make sure we, we have this distance from the corner of the eye, which is very important. You get that distance wrong, well, it's just gonna haunt you as we're coming down here. So you always, you know, when you work with an airbrush, as long as I do, you just sense something wrong, right? And this was just loosened a little bit. And that's just such a minor thing, but that minor thing, if you work as much as I do, you're almost like you just know there was something off. So now it's working perfectly. So now we're just going to try and see where where this nasal bone stops, and then we're going to look and try and find the uh, upper lateral cartilage as it comes. Makes this kind of like a delta shape. And then you can actually see where the alar cartilage starts. It's just a little bit lighter on the tip of her nose. And that's where the alar cartilage starts. So you're really getting, you're really looking at the nose in a way that, you know, I hadn't looked at before. And then right here, I'm just going to kind of hit that little step in the shape of her nose. Again, this little step right here. For me, it's not good enough to just copy what I'm seeing. I want to, I really want to understand what I'm seeing. And when I'm painting a portrait, the only way that I'm going to understand is A, realizing the anatomy and also that this is a three-dimensional form that's being affected by the light in the same way that the eye is being affected, everything. So even in this very early going, knowing the anatomy, knowing the three-dimensional forms that make up that nose and the six, the six parts, the nasal bone on both sides, the the lateral bone, the lateral cartilage on both sides, and the alar cartilage on both sides. You still do that one second roll. That hasn't gone away. But now you have the added knowledge of the anatomy, which is really going to help, you know? Ah, oh, thanks, Mr. Mister uh, Roy says she's starting to take form already. I appreciate that. And Dwayne says the strain, the paint, that's great. Paul says safe trip, Steve. Very cool. Thanks, guys. And so that's cool. So Steve is going on vacation to see his family in Massachusetts. And it's really beautiful. We have that in the Northeast. We have beautiful Christmas weather here. I know that because I lived in Florida for a while, and it's not Christmas weather there. And so you see how just by having the knowledge of the anatomy, I'm not saying it's like the silver bullet, but what I'm, I am saying is, is that it's going to give you an easier time. Anything that's going to give you an easier time, I'm all for. So that's why I teach it so much. And that's why I'm really concentrating on just her and not going throughout the whole painting. Because this way, this particular 
uh, this particular live stream, you guys can take, and guys and girls can really take away from it something that's going to help your painting right away. And that's what it's all about for me. So we have the zygomatic bone. So now here, we're going to do the shadow of the zygomatic bone, about five inches away, four or five inches away. And you can see how the value is very light here. And then as the zygomatic bone starts to turn, and uh, it, it gets darker and darker as it turns away from the light. So as it comes down, we're getting darker. But I'm going to explain what's happening with the zygomatic bone and the mandible. Okay, so that's something that I'll be able to really explain. But first we'll do this side and then we'll work on this side of the zygomatic bone. So we're seeing the zygomatic bone really clearly here. Here she's turned away, so we're kind of in a, you know, the zygomatic bone is kind of flat and off to the side, so we really don't see it as strong as on the camera left but you can see it's very light I'm actually going to be five inches away and I'm just going to ever so lightly just bring in the uh, the very light reaction of that zygomatic bone very light <laughs> Tone says he said uh, he'll take shorts and t-shirts for a thousand <laughs> like Jeopardy right that's funny. And so now, what we're going to do, I'm going to get my iPad. So I think my iPad is going to help us. Let me go get my iPad, and we'll look at this one program I have. And this program is really great. Uh, it's a Windows-based program. And I'll open this up and show you this. Uh, hey, Mr. Mr. John Payne, all the way from upstate New York. How are you, my friend? Great to see you. Okay, so now I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that program. Not gonna. Got to get rid of my slang. So here's this program, and we'll kind of lower our. Okay, so look at this really cool program. 3D Human Anatomy. The pay version, I think, is like, it's really inexpensive. It's like, it's only like $3 or something. So I highly recommend it. Let's get rid of the skull. Let's get rid of... Uh, let's see. Okay, cool. So we'll move this ALAR cartilage over here. So let's let's move this up. And I want to show you, and I'm going to zoom in. Let's see. There we go. Look at our guy here. We'll move him down. So this is our guy right here. So that's our that's our our skull. So when we're looking at the zygomatic bone we are only seeing the light shadow from this zygomatic bone. It really isn't a deep shadow. You wouldn't see a lot of shadow. But why there's that deep cheekbone, that deep dark cheekbone, is because of this. So once again, I'm going to bring up Paula. And you see how there's this deep dark here in the cheekbone or the zygomatic bone right here? Why is that caused? Because it's not rounded, it's not causing anything. What's happening? And that's something that always pondered me when doing portraits. So now we're going to uh, crack the case. So let's look at him from underneath. Look at underneath, if we move here, look how further in the jawbone is from the zygomatic bone. It's really quite dramatic. And if I zoom in even more, can I zoom in anymore? Nope, I think I exceeded my zooming capabilities. 
And so you can see there's quite a difference in, see that? From here, so that, that jawbone, our jawbone is further in. So they're not level, they're parallel, but they're not on the same plane. So now, if we look at this here, let's bring him down. Now you can see, because right here, it, it really doesn't, it's really not uh, indicative. But look when we go like that, then you can see the, the space between this, the, uh, the mandible is well in than the uh, zygomatic bone. All right, so now that we know that, let me go ahead and turn off my iPad. iPads are great. Yay, iPads. Okay, so let's make this deeper. Good lesson today. Now, that's why we got this dark here. That's why we have this dark here is that space between the zygomatic bone and your jaw bone. They're not aligned. The jaw bone is much further in. So that's why right here it gets super dark. Not because it's turning away from the light, because of that gap that's in between the zygomatic bone and the uh, mandible or the cheekbone and the jaw bone. So I hope that that helps. I hope that helps you to see things in a different way. And then right here, and then right over here, we have, we have this, this muscle called the masseter. And that's a really strong muscle. It gives us all those pounds a square inch uh, so we can tear into flesh and all that other stuff when we're eating beef and, and you know, crack nuts and, you know, all of that. And so that's why you see this come out, this value come out. So I really want to really touch on the beauty of the human anatomy, but also kind of dispel some of the some of the um, mystery, right? And remember, we're Columbo, right? We're we're Columbo light detectives, right? So we're trying to figure out why is this happening? Why is she? Why are these lights happening? Why are these shadows happening? And we can find out by really being sleuths, like really figuring out what's happening. And so right now I'm, I'm not really thinking of her likeness at all. I'm basically just thinking about being a detective for the light, for the anatomy. And, um, and then the other stuff comes naturally. Okay, so we're moving down here. So I like that here, and I'm going to darken the space here between the zygomatic bone and the jaw, or the cheekbone and the jaw. So as you can see, she's really coming together. And let's see any questions I missed. Uh, Nope, not yet. No questions. Uh, I know you guys are out there. I hear you breathing. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield. Okay, so let's do a little erasing. This is nice and dry. So I'm going to do a little erasing. Okay, because this is very soft edge over here, right? Very soft edge. So do you guys like the fact that I stuck with this and not kind of work on the whole thing? Do you like this approach of really being lesson based uh, with the live stream? Let me know. I'll do more of it. Very soft edge, so we're going to work on the edges. Of course, right here we have our filtrum, so we have to have a little bit darker because the filtrum is going in, uh, and that's causing that. And oh, cool! Thanks, Dwayne. Dwayne's still here, and Tone is doing good. He's going to watch anyway. <laughs> 
cool. Okay, so now you can see I'm working on the shadow, working on the filter in here. Uh, you know, worrying about, you know, the larger questions right now. Okay, so let's work on her beautiful lips here. Keep it light. So right here is interesting. It's very angular, this part of her lip. Very angular. I haven't done any ink there yet, so I have the ability to erase. But if I put ink there, then I definitely would not erase. This comes over here, and then this comes straight up, like bam, really, really harsh. And then this comes over at this angle. Okay, let's make this happen. Very light, light pressure. Just getting the value. Okay, so now we can maybe start working on the uh, dark at the corner of the mouth here. Let's make it big so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let us focus. Focus, focus, let's focus. There we go. Okay, now. Make my reference bigger. Right on this side. Let's start kind of making this turn. Wow, Colette, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. So encouraging. It helps out so much. It makes me realize that I'm doing the right thing. And it's not the amount of people that matters. It's the quality of the people. And you guys and girls always, always let me know that's the case. So thank you so much for the encouragement, Cola. That means so much. Uh, so cool. Three Super Chats today. Thank you, everybody. So great. Dwayne, Honey, and Colette, I really appreciate you guys so much. And then we're going to work on this side. I'm so excited. Thank you. Now we're gonna we're going to kind of work on how the lips and the teeth kind of have this interplay here. See that and we'll get more specific later. Let's get rid of these pencil lines. They got to go. I don't have to worry about where those highlights are going to go. It's not important. We can freehand that. Oh, thank you, Dwayne. Dwayne says he appreciates the time and effort that I spend on these live streams. Thank you, Dwayne. That means a lot to me. I, I really want to make a difference. And, and uh, you know... And also create a really cool community, which I feel is happening too. Okay, so now I'm just going to come in ever so lightly and just create the mid-tone of her lips here. Now what's interesting is always the platform I don't even know what to call it, so we'll find out. So basically, the lips kind of sit on a platform, 
they don't they're not flush with the with the face right they kind of sit on this platform here of of uh, skin like thick layer of the skin uh, and much like the you know different parts of the ear and, and different parts of the body where it's just this thick layer of skin and that's what this platform that the lips actually sit on the lower lip I should say not like wax lips you know when we were kids we have the wax lips that kind of just sat on our face but this doesn't it it actually sits on this kind of weird ridge of skin but I'm going to be referring to uh, one of the things I want is I want this uh, textbook on plastic surgery so that's what I'm going to be looking for that's going to really help you know uh, thanks Dwayne I appreciate that Dwayne says I'm appreciating I'm uh, achieving both you know uh, sharing knowledge and also creating a really cool community so that makes me feel great sir Mr. Webb, how are you? Great to see you, sir. How you doing today? So, Mr. Webb, I know you told me before, but I forget what part of the country are you from, sir? I always like to know where everybody is from. Raise that air pressure a little bit. And so let's work on this side here. Upper lip, upper lip, and then we have this little kind of wilt there on the side, and the shadow is caused by the uh, jowl fat, which is really interesting, another fat compartment, which explains a lot of the little shadows that are that we have and bring this down and again you see that the lip does not go right to the corner it comes down and you can see this little little bit of skin that little platform it sits on it's just fascinating stuff and I'm learning and what I learn I'll share with you all but I'll tell you, anatomy is a cumulative knowledge, right? You have to continue building on it. Very important. And we're just... I'm not going to get too detailed too early. That's the wrong way to do it. You want to build up your values, your anatomical forms, your shadows, such as this really soft shadow underneath. Uh, the cast shadow and then this beautiful hard edge shadow that's right underneath the nostril there see that that's just so beautiful so you want to you want to see that beauty and then as you're doing that you can start seeing the forms a little better like right there in the corner of the nose there Okay, so let's uh, let's zoom out a little bit and see what we have. Okay, a little more definition. It looks a little dark. Well, that's okay because everything else is so light. So let's not worry too much that it is too dark, you know? And uh, so that's cool. And let's go ahead and we'll work on this, uh, this area right here, which is the mentalis. And there's several muscles here. You don't usually see them. What you usually see is the mental fat, which is like a golf ball, like a golf ball size here. I mean, everyone is different, right? But I do have, I do have a diagram, and I'm going to take it off my wall and show you all. Hey, that rhymes. I'm going to take it off the wall, and I'm going to show you all. So right here, you can see, right here is what we're talking about. So the main thing is this large fat compartment right here called the mental fat. But there are some 
They have some muscles and they do have, uh, sometimes there's one large mental fat, but here you can see it's separated and that's why you see different shapes. But there are also some muscles there that, you know, we do see from time to time. I'm going to move this over here. Uh, let's see real quick if I can pull up that particular image. Did I? I think I can do that. So with the magic of uh, video, let's go to pictures. We're going to go to anatomy. Do I see an anatomy? No, I don't. I see nose anatomy. So I'm going to go to downloads or desktop pictures this PC pictures bear with me guys I'm getting close I can feel it uh, desktop anatomy there we go we're doing good and we're almost there okay here we go so look at this image as it comes so we're looking at the chin center underneath and you see you have these two muscles and they're called the depressed the depressor labii which is uh, let me make this smaller which are these kind of rubber band muscles going this way and then we have the main muscles which is sometimes you do see them and that is called let me see if I can see it it has to tell us what it is I just don't see it yes the depressor anguli oris so and let me make this small and you'll see the depressor anguli oris right here coming down in this way and that creates like a space so sometimes you see a space and that's because the muscle uh, is is very strong and pronounced and that fat that goes over it sometimes is very thin so that's why you see like definition in the chin sometimes but in most people you don't it's kind of like a golf ball shape so let's look at her and see you know what's going on with her and so we can definitely see that she has a little bit of definition here and that's basically having to do with that issue there so just a little bit and everyone's different and then here let me turn off the face muscles okay now let's uh go ahead and work on that so this is like a kind of a golf ball shape that's coming here so we're just gonna going to slightly uh, put some value here. I'm going to be about five inches away and that's going to be very very light but what I want to do is by going very light I'm going to start to create that mental fat that golf ball shape right there on her chin and it's super light so I'm going to be further away and just ever so slightly um, I'm going to be darkening around it. Not shadows, just little, little indentation things, and then that mental fat coming out really wide, really far. And then right in the center, you see that little bit of a lip, which is caused by those depresso anguli oris muscles. And you see how we already are establishing that. And also there's a slight shadow underneath the jawbone. So that's why you have this slight dark. So it's really cool to really understand why things are happening as opposed to just painting them. I really, really feel good about knowing why as opposed to just doing it. And so now you can see how she's taken shape. And there are some areas that are a little bit dark, so 
we're going to let that dry. While that's dry, we're going to take our notch eraser and we're just going to lightly erase some of these pencil lines that are no longer needed. And you can see this area is nice and dry. So we can go ahead and work that. And also kind of shape, shape that light, go back and forth. Like if we were working in oils, right? You see your oil painters, they'll come in with their shadow color and they'll come in with their light color and they'll go back and forth till they get it just perfectly right and making it round. That's exactly what we are doing. And, and uh, so we're creating something beautiful and uh, that's, and, but we're going to be super patient, much more patient than other artists may be, you know? So that's really important. Ah, oh, thanks, Brad. Brad says she's looking beautiful. Thank you, sir. And Mark Webb is saying she's looking really good. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. And uh, let's bring this over. And then we can, as we go, we can really start working on those, those bones, the nasal bones on left, right, the lateral cartilage, the alar cartilage. We can really... But we have that kind of tonal framework, which is really good. And where it is a little dark, I can just calm this down and come in with a little bit of an aggressive eraser and kind of calm that down a little bit. Got to calm it down a little bit. And I get overzealous. And then this angle, see this angle right here of the... Uh, lateral cartilage comes in much more strong here. Like so. And then this comes over here, but then we're noticing that the lateral cartilage and nasal bone pretty much come much further in. Like so, like right here at this angle. Then it comes here and then kind of makes this left hand turn. So let's, let's fix that. Again, I'm going to be about five inches away and just get that as, you know, as perfect as I can at this point. Not perfect, but as best I can. We definitely don't want to get hung up on perfect. And then we can definitely see there's a lot more room here. Uh, for the eye socket here. So we have to adjust this. This comes way over. See how this comes past here? Comes way over. And then this comes down. Swings down. And this comes out. And it swings down. And then we, we have this really cool angle here. So let's Let's adjust that, right? There we go. And same thing here. We're going to... Uh, oh, look at that. It's 11.26 already. I thought it was 10.30, guys. This was a fun live stream. I just It's because of you guys. Thank you for the super chats. But more importantly, thank you for the great company. Uh, I can't believe it's 1126. This is one of the fastest uh, live streams as far as, you know, the time-space continuum. It went by really fast. So thank you for that, everybody that's here. Everybody that was at the first live stream before we had the technical glitch. Right? And now we can basically, now we can erase the pencil lines here which is cool. Ah, oh, Nameless, thanks for hanging out. Great to see you. Glad you had a couple of days off of work. Great to see you, Todd. Great to see you, Dwayne. And uh, Zavi and, and everybody hanging out. Mr. Steve Leahy for being here earlier. Paul, thank you so much. Great to see you. And so this was fun. So thank you. And ah, uh, thanks, Tone. That means a lot to me. Thanks, Colette, for the super chat. Thank you so much, um, 
Colette, and thank you, Dwayne, for the super chat, and thank you, Honey, for the super chat. It helps out immensely. You guys just don't know. And so, uh, oh yeah, everyone have a great week. Are we at 11.29, never in 28. So I'll just continue erasing, kind of erasing and refining here for the next two minutes. Got to try and give you the full, the full value, right? And then I could erase some of these superfluous lines. We don't need them anymore. And uh, we're going to get there. We really are. What a, what a nice start, right? A nice uh, relaxing start. And we're creating a likeness from underneath out, right? And I think that's fantastic. And we'll soften this up. And we'll pick up exactly where we left off last week, which is really cool. And uh, so as you can see, it's, it's just working on anatomy let's move this away so for the last minute you can see how she looks uh you know in comparison to what's around her i think it's a good start i think we're doing really well and that's what we want we want that strong start and this start that we're doing would work in oils, work in pastel, work in drawing, work in airbrush, black and white, sepia color it's it's a blueprint it's no matter what medium you're working digital that it's going to work it's very pragmatic and i think it's something we all can get behind so and uh thank you so much uh mark for that i appreciate it and uh mr todd is still here so really really i love the anatomy we can definitely come in and maybe accentuate that anatomy a little bit right because uh, maybe the photographer didn't catch it, right? But I kind of want to accentuate that anatomy, right? What makes her human? What makes her human is not the makeup. What makes her human is the same anatomy that we all have. And I like that kind of universality of the 16th, the, you know, the 17th century painting of Vermeer, Girl with a Pearl Earring, and then Paula Ray. They have that continuity which is the anatomy, the skull, the muscles, the fat compartments. So, guys, thank you so much. It was great to see you. And thank you, uh, Mark. He says hit that, smash that like button. I hope you have a great week. Take care. Any questions, paintingclips at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.